Books were really my first love. I have very fond memories of my mother reading to me as a kid at bedtime. I loved stories. And in my adult life, you can see I continue to make it look like I still continue that practice. Shyamalan twist, I've been dead the entire time. Or I'm a tree. I, there, I just saved you two hours of having to watch The Happening. What I want to do is focus on three books that I have a personal relationship with. And just like most of my personal relationships, they never respond back to my texts. These are going to be some odd choices. As much as you're probably yearning for somebody to talk about Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings again, these are some of my obscure favorites. As a child of the 80s, I love Jim Henson. His creations could be silly or heartfelt, and he was never afraid to put a little bit of horror in there for children. And if you've seen things like Dark Crystal or Labyrinth, then you know that he was able to make his stuff for adults as well. And that is why Tale of Sand is such an interesting book. This is a lost screenplay that Jim Henson wrote that was converted into a graphic novel about four or five years ago. This would have made for a trippy, weird movie, and it kind of makes for a trippy, weird book. This is a guy who's adrift in a desert, walking in and out of seemingly illusions, finding out more about himself. There is long stretches of pages where it's just the art, it's just the action that's happening. Very little is spoken, not very many words are communicated. We are in here for the journey, for the spectacle of it, for the weirdness of it. So hopefully this isn't wrecking too much copyright here, but just look at a sample page that I have uh, up here for you. This was helped to be animated by Ramon K. Perez. I should have known that off the top of my head. It, Ramon K. Perez, and you can see how his use of pinks and lavenders is punctuated by the focus of this page, the yellows of the mane of the lion. And then this weird, vision and illusion, that's what he focuses on. Whereas in later, we get into other kind of color hues of golds and blacks. It's just a really, really interesting book that if you are a Jim Henson fan, this is just a little bit of ephemera. That is a good little, little read. And I'm glad I have this in my collection. I'm a lover of podcasts. And one of the podcasts that I've fallen in and out of love with over the years is Welcome to Night Vale. As much as it also pushes itself into the weirdness category. There's this vulnerability of the characters that I just really adhere to. In their first book, I didn't have it off the shelf yet, in their first book called Welcome to Night Vale, both Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner are able to take the story and expand on it. If you're unfamiliar with the podcast, it's normally just one person in a radio station kind of narrating things about this weird desert town. And in here, we get to actually get inside the head of a character that isn't Cecil, the, the uh, radio host of Night Vale Radio. We have us kind of getting outside of Night Vale and maybe even pushing into how Night Vale was created in the first place. If you are looking for kind of a trippy novel, and I don't think necessarily that you need to have listened to the podcast to enjoy this book. It's in, in the same vein of like Neil Gaiman or magical realism novels. It's just a really fun, good read. I just now realized that all three of my selections kind of showcase how I enjoy the offbeat and bizarre. So let's finish off with my choice of a true life book. This is an autobiography that's talking about a real life cartoon world. And no, I'm not talking about cool world. No, this is a uh, hitman my real life in the cartoon world of pro wrestling. If you've somehow made it this far into my channel and not understood that I am this weirdly fanatical fan of professional wrestling, then surprise, I guess, I am. This is the autobiography. Growing up, my absolute favorite wrestler in the entire world was Bret Hart, mostly because he was Canadian, he was from the same province as me, I now live in the same city as he grew up in, and he was just this guy that was a kind of a normal dude. Sure, he was big and larger than life as well with all the other wrestlers, but he wasn't Hulk Hogan or the Ultimate Warrior who were all roided up with gigantic muscles and, you know, telling people to eat their vitamins and say their prayers, you know, that type of thing. And I don't need to get into it here, but the actual real story 
of Bret Hart and his career in wrestling is a crazy story. The thing that's fascinating about wrestling is that yes, the vast majority of the show is predetermined beforehand, but the interesting things that can sometimes happen are real events that are happening within the fiction. There's stuff that's happening backstage that sometimes comes out on display in front of the crowds. And Bret Hart is able to go into detail about this crazy, weird world and the infamous Montreal screw job, which is not a weird drink or sex act, whatever joke you want to make in that in that scenario. That I could have done. I'm not going to. Okay, I respect my audience too much to go there. I think that's a little bit more special because this book came out while I was still working at a bookstore. I was a manager at a bookstore for about three years, and on the front page I have it autographed to moi. That's, that's, I'm sorry, I uh, should have made that clear. That's French for Kyle. Of the three, this is probably the one that unless you're somewhat interested in professional wrestling, I don't know how much you would get from the book. There is definitely some very interesting stories about growing up in a wrestling family and about life after stepping away from the squared circle. But the meat and potatoes of this is finding out the behind the scenes stories of the WWF and then the WWE, WCW, and these other organizations that were at their peak in the 1990s. Those are three selections from my library. There are other oddities that are sprinkled throughout here. I just need to remember where I hid that body. Tell me about your favorite odd books down in the comments below. My name is Kyle. Thank you so much for watching. I upload videos every Monday and Thursday. Stick around if you would like to. This entire room is nothing but books and dust.